Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and we have four conference calls coming up that I think are really exciting. The first one I'm on, it's Conversations with Dr. Pam. And the first few minutes we're going to talk about inflammation, which is a precursor to conditions ranging from uh, simple colds and uh, heart disease all the way to cancer and autoimmune diseases. I'm going to talk about how inflammation develops, how to get rid of it. And then you can ask me anything you want after we finish covering that topic. On the 22nd of April, Dell is going to talk about spring vegetables. Our celebrity chef Dell is the best and you really should take advantage of learning how to cook from him. I sure do take advantage of eating when Dell's in the kitchen. I love his food. Anyway, He'll talk about some of the spring vegetables that are in season right now, what to do with them, and he'll answer your food and cooking questions. Our next intro to plant-based nutrition is on April 24th, and on April 25th, one of our associates is going to talk about this silly book, Wheat Belly. I get emails about it every day. This is an author, written by an author, who claims that consuming wheat is responsible for everything from allergies to weight gain to cancer. And uh, so finally, we're going to have a really good thorough analysis of this book, and you'll get to ask questions of our speaker. All right, I want to talk about a couple things today. First one is aspirin. And you may have noticed, I've seen tons of these ads, and I don't watch TV so much, so I know there must be really a lot of them. There's a very aggressive advertising campaign by Bayer Aspirin um, that's been appearing on television, and the ads feature various everyday people who suddenly had a heart attack and survived, and they explain that now they're on an aspirin regimen recommended by their doctor. And of course, the implied message is, we should all be taking aspirin. Well, the ads are effective. That's why drug companies spend billions of dollars a year advertising. And by the way, it's only here in New Zealand that they can do that. They can't do it anyplace else on the planet. But it does work. And there is some evidence to indicate that uh, using aspirin to prevent secondary uh, coronary events might be effective, although the results are nothing like what you get when you use dietary intervention. But uh, it is clear, the studies are very clear, that taking aspirin for primary prevention hurts more people than it helps. Now, one of the most frustrating things in my line of work is that um, you know, I'm trying to get people to change the way they eat, change the way that they interact with the medical community, and the problem is that evidence sometimes doesn't change medical practice much, and this is the case with aspirin. A recent survey of patients in two primary practice clinics in Alberta, Canada, showed that 53% of patients were taking aspirin every day in order to avoid a first coronary event, and 25% of those patients were taking aspirin on their own rather than on the recommendation of a doctor. Patients taking aspirin reported that uh, they believed the benefits outweighed the risks, and those who didn't take aspirin weren't very sure about this. The researchers reported that very few patients actually thought that the risk could possibly outweigh the benefits. Now, the bad news in this study um, comes from a couple different directions. First, it shows that the advertising is working, and personally, I think we ought to get rid of drug ads, but people have been sold on the idea that aspirin is beneficial and Bayer's not required to put anything in their ads about the fact that more people will be hurt than helped uh, when using aspirin for primary prevention. But even more distressing is 75% of the patients who were taking aspirin were given advice to do so, erroneous advice by their doctors. I'm frequently asked questions like, why do these doctors keep recommending things that don't work or are dangerous? Don't they know? Is it that they know and they don't care? Well, I've always tried to be kind to my colleagues and assume positive intent, but it's becoming really increasingly difficult to defend practices that range from willful ignorance. Of, it, it's willful. If you're reading the medical journals, you know this stuff. So it's getting harder to defend people who are just ignoring the evidence and, and just doing what they are have always done and refuse to change. But in the meantime, I guess we'll just wake up every day and make it our life's work here at the Wellness Forum to tell the truth about this stuff and hope that every day we continue to gather a following. That's my goal anyway. All right, now the next study that I'm going to talk about actually is really scary. And it concerns the use of antibiotics in animals and the implications for health in people. In 2011, 30 million pounds of antibiotics were given to animals raised on factory farms. Humans used less than 8 million pounds, which means that most of the antibiotics are being given to animals. Farmers have used, and I should say more accurately, abused this practice for years since regularly giving antibiotics to animals, first of all, helps to prevent disease in these factory farms where thousands and thousands of animals are just crammed into small spaces and because antibiotics promote rapid growth and so the animals can be sold and slaughtered much earlier. 
Now, for many years, health professionals have warned that this is a bad practice. And, you know, there aren't a lot of things that we all agree on, but this happens to be one of them. And uh, the, the risks are everything from increasing the risk of transmitting antibiotic-resistant bacteria from farm animals to humans to um, more uh, rapid growth in children leading to precocious puberty, etc. But a new report from Denmark may provide some evidence that wakes people up a little bit. This report involved documenting cases in which MRSA, an antibiotic-resistant staph infection that often results in death, was transmitted from farm animals to people. And of course, this is, this is where the real danger is. The incidence of MRSA is really low in Denmark. When diagnosed, it's required that public health authorities be notified. So, two women operating small family-type farms, these weren't even factory farms, were diagnosed with a new strain of MRSA infection that was previously reported in cattle. Follow-up investigation shows that animals on both farms were carrying the new strain of MRSA and that it was circulating among the animals before it jumped species into people. Now, this isn't the only study. Obviously, this is a study of two particular situations in Denmark, but it's not the only one. And just by way of example, a study last year showed that a common strain of MRSA that originated in humans was transferred to livestock. This strain then developed resistance to two common antibiotics and jumped back to humans. So we have plenty of evidence that shows that this is actually going on. So where are the USDA and the FDA on this issue? Very interesting question. The FDA issues guidelines for the safe use of antibiotics for both humans and uh, animals, but they're routinely ignored, and efforts to get the FDA to police its own uh, restrictions and laws have been pretty fruitless. And as for the USDA, this agency just does not take stands on behalf of public health if it means hurting farmers in any way, shape, or form. So this leaves two types of members of the public. Those who are unaware, I'm speaking to you, wake up, stop consuming conventionally grown animals, or people who deliberately choose to eat conventionally grown animal foods even though they know that these kinds of problems um, exist. Now I can forgive the people who don't know any better, but for the people who've actually heard these messages, know this is going on, and then just decide I'm gonna eat steak in a restaurant or have cheese pizza at a party, I'm really kind of starting to run out of patience. I mean, what are these people thinking when they do these things? That it's someone else's problem to solve or that they'll escape the consequences of their actions? I mean, we have to first of all educate the people who don't know and for the people who already know and have heard this message, wake up people and start behaving responsibly. These are serious, serious situations and people die as a result of these, bac uh, these bacteria that are um, antibiotic resistant. So that's all for now. As always, feel free to pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you on Thursday.